brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Portaway Podcast. I'm up in here solo dolo today. My guy Ant texting him right now. He's at work. That being said, I said, shoot, man, I don't even want to do the show this week without you. <clears throat> but he knows the show must go on, so do I. So I got a better. Oh, let me not. Let me bite my tongue on that. I can't, I can't say better, but I got a great guy coming to the podcast. I know I, I made a, the soft announcement uh, to let you guys know that we were doing a live show today. Um, this guy real quick, I'm going to talk about him before he comes on because it's a, it's a little easier when you don't have to respond right away, um, when somebody's, you know, uh, recognizing you and, 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 um, and, uh, and giving you your flowers, so to speak. Uh, Chris Algieri is coming to the podcast today and I'm, I'm super happy and excited to have him on the podcast. Uh, one of the few minds in boxing that I feel, um, and, and there's a lot, but for me, in, in, in terms of people who, who I've seen on TV, heard on the radio, the list goes on, um, one of the best to do it. Um, I, I certainly consider myself the best, but he, he, he's, he's right there with me. And um, so I, I thought it was cool. It would be cool to have him on the show today. Uh, he, of course, called the zone fights over the weekend and uh, just pays attention to boxing. And uh, in substitute of, of Ant not being here, of course, everyone else not being here, I need a strong guy with me, you know. So welcome to the Portaway Podcast, uh, Chris Algieri. Uh, Chris, you got? A, do you have a fight name? The sign? Do you have a fight name? A fight name? No. No, no. I mean, uh, uh, Michael Buffer actually gave me the nickname, the Fighting Collegian, right before I fought Ruslan. He okay. just asked me if I, I could use that or if he could use that when he introduced me, but I, I never really adopted it. Um, I had a couple of like little names, Pride of Huntington, which is where I grew up. I just feel um, when Michael Buffer gives you a a, a ring name, you just take the ring name. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I I I did at the time, but, but you didn't run with it, huh? <laughs> uh huh. Nah, I mean it, it's uh, I don't know, fighting collegiate. It sounds cool, but it, yeah, uh, I mean let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. How I you mean, feeling, it, it, man? It, I'm good. I'm good, Sean. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words as well coming in um it's a real honor to be here Love absolutely your show, man so. i appreciate you joining the podcast today absolutely absolutely you, this is, this, do you this do is you do, do podcasting yourself i do I yeah do. what's what's your podcast uh inside boxing live it's uh with myself and with dan canobio he's okay. uh his father invented compu box yes so, sir yes sir. i'm familiar so he's he's familiar with he's dan. good he's got all the numbers yeah so he's got the numbers i got the sweet science we put it together okay. it's, a, it's a good show I knew you had a show. I just wasn't exactly sure. You, I hear so many things. I'll be sure to uh, follow that and, 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 of course, support you. Um, what did you think about the boxing over this weekend? I, definitely not what I expected. Um, you know, especially Pro Gray has been. Uh, I think Regis is is an excellent, excellent fighter. I mean, he hasn't been the most busy guy against top opposition lately. Yeah. But I mean, he had a great run in the World Series. Yeah. And uh, you know, he's he's done well since then. He's he's changed his style up a little bit. He's a little more boxing. He's got a very old school upper body body movement. Hangs mm-hmm. over that front foot. Boxes kind of slick at times, but is still ready to engage, and uh, has made that really really. Uh, effective recently scoring all knockouts since his uh his lone loss to uh to josh taylor and he's been he's been talking a lot about fighting all these top guys and yeah. you know he uh he had a guy in front of him that wasn't really willing to engage yeah. and it, it just made for a fight that was not not great to watch we'll get there we'll get there yep. slow down we'll get there let me i got a question <laughs> for you um because i find when i do my work for other networks and things like that, it's sometimes it's hard for me to catch up and get back and catch all of the boxing before I have to do a podcast a day later, or sometimes two or three days later. Is it was it hard for you this weekend to to do what you had to do and then go on and go back and take a look at Tim Zhu? Oh, absolutely. So that's uh, I think that's a major major issue with with guys like us who have to report on these things week to week uh i mean i used to always catch fights on sunday morning i would sl- i would go to sleep those, those these fights are too late at night <laughs> I, i'd go to sleep i'd wake up on sunday i'd see it on on instagram or twitter first and then i go watch the fight yeah can't do that anymore yeah so yeah. Uh, i'm having a lot of late saturdays Saturday yeah you nights. gotta stay stay like in in the in the moment you know so yeah 
Uh, and then a lot of we, times I'm watching fights on, on the flight home the next day, getting ready for the podcast on Monday. Yeah. I just need you to do the cosign for me. I get a lot of uh, flack from time to time if I don't catch certain fights and the fans want me to report it. I'm like, man, I had a busy week. I was traveling, studying for something else, and the list goes on. So I just kind of needed you to make that plug. Like, hey, give him, give him some, some, give him some, some, be easy on him. You know, he's, he's doing a lot, you know? Give him some breathing room. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. But people don't understand how much homework we do for these, for these yeah. gigs. Yeah. Like, I was, I was telling somebody, I forgot who it was the other day, about all the tape review I do leading up to a fight night. And they were like, wow, I didn't realize it was that much. I'm like, well, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but I want to be good. Yeah. If you, if you want to, if you, hey, listen, you could, you can do anything halfway, but if you want to be good, you got to, you got to put in the work. It's like I say, I, I, I want to be able to do my job and do everybody else's job just in case somebody gets sick, just in case somebody went to the bathroom and got stuck, just in case anything happens, I want to be able to do everybody's job. And that requires the extra studying and the knowing certain numbers that we really aren't expected to know. I want to know it all. So I'm happy to hear you putting in that kind of time too. I'm no, no, no uh, surprise to hear that. Yeah, no, same, same for you. I know you put in the work. I know you have, you got, you've got that, that knowledge in, in your pocket whenever yeah. you need it, just yeah. in case you got to fill some time or whatever. Yeah. You drop something that people didn't know. Uh, that that's that's what makes the fans you know enjoy your 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 cast and 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 to learn because that's yeah. the whole that's our job our job yeah. is to teach people yeah about what they're looking at that's exactly what i was told and that's what i do so let's jump into the fights over the weekend um what do you have anything else going on anything else that you want to plug in no nah, i mean just 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 the podcast right now you know and I'm i'm getting as much work as i can with commentating i would feel like i just trying to get as much work as I possibly can. I'm just, it's all reps for me. I want to, you love it. I, like you, I love it. I love it. It's I mean, fun, I'm, right? I'm, I'm, I'm more immersed now in boxing than I ever have been ever in my whole entire mm -hmm. life in the last like two to three years, more boxing than my whole life. You love it though, right? Like it's fun. There's nothing that will pull you away from it. Right? <laughs> no, I mean, listen, the travel is one thing. I travel almost every weekend, but honestly, like the, the job is great. Like yeah. we get to sit, in the best seat possible. Yeah. Watching the sport that we love. Yeah. And everybody's got to listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Do you ever, um, when you're when you're commentating, watching the fight? Because I know this happened to me the other day, where the ring rope was like literally at my eye line, and it was like I found myself like sometimes I'm standing up, I'm looking in, I'm like damn, they're in the ring. Sometimes do you do you find yourself in that position? And if, and if you do, do you ever think about the judges and what they may be going through? That's such a great point and one that unless you've done what we've done, you have, you would have no idea you'd ever ever think about that. I yeah. literally had that happen to me on Saturday night. Yeah. I was leaning in my chair. I, I'm surprised I didn't break it and, 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 and bust my ass, but I was leaning in my chair back to get the great angle so I could see above the bottom rope at the right angle so I could see them because I was losing. Yeah. Losing, I was losing their gloves in their face with with the bottom rope. Yeah. So I was constantly, like you said. So I started to lean on my back of my chair. Yeah. But you know, we got the headsets on, so we don't have to worry about the mic. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, absolutely. And that, that that's that's such a great point about the judges too, because they're only looking at one vantage point, one portion of the ring, one angle, and they got to, you know, they might look down and take a note. And they look up, they miss something, and you 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 can't miss anything mm -hmm. when you're when you're judging around. I've watched TV. Uh, judges on TV, and I've seen some judges they stay in the stay in the same spot the entire fight, and then I've seen other judges where they're they're like this, they're leaning in and they're really trying to find the best way to see every bit of the fight because they don't want to miss it. You know what I mean? And so I think that's that's something that people don't know when they when they hear scores and they're like, man, what are these judges looking at? The judges really only have one viewpoint. They can't change it at practically any point in the fight and the most thing they can do is really try to lean in and try to figure it out you know yeah i mean it, listen if the ref is in the way you don't see a big shot so listen th th this past weekend th there wasn't a lot of action not a lot of landed punches so like yeah. literally one punch can change the whole round and that can happen in, in any fight really yeah but if the ref is in the way you don't have the right vantage point now you got a round that could go either way yeah. you didn't see the one shot yeah judging man I'm, I'm i'm not jealous of them at all well and we'll get to that knockdown with uh and in, in, in the Rigaru fight as well. We'll get to that too. But one more thing. Is there anything you don't like about commentary? Uh, I mean, 
Twitter response. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter response. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Only thing People... I don't like about commentating ringside is when the fighters work their way right here in front of me and they're swinging and there's, I know that there's some sweat that's going to come my way or there's some blood that's going to come my way. When, whenever the fight is over here, I put my, I put my paper up over my face and I took, take my head to the monitor. That's my only, and I've gone home before and I've seen blood on my suit, ruined mm -hmm. suit. And I'm just, that's the only thing I don't like about commentary. I got uh, Tyson Fury blood on me from when he fought uh, Otto Valin when he had that really, really bad cut. Oh, uh, yeah. I got, man, my shirt ruined. Oh, my there was God. no dry. I took it to dry cleaner. He was like, I, this, I can't do anything. Yeah. That, man. <laughs> like, damn. Let's get into the boxing, man. Let's, and let's go with the zone first. Um, I told my guy Ant to call in. And the reason why I, I told Ant with two T's to call in is because he's from Louisiana. 100% in full support of a Regis. And if by chance we don't get to this next week, I was like, yo, I want you to call in. I know you're working. Just give us five minutes. Give us your thought on Regis. And then you can you can bounce and we'll, we'll finish it up from there. But he may call in at some point. I hit Regis and told him to call in. He said he was getting a tattoo. He might call in. We'll see what happens. Um, but let's get into it, man. Um, and there was a couple fights on that DAZN card where I was like, wow, people didn't expect this to happen. The young yeah. lady, Rama? Ramla, that was, I mean, that, that was a great fight, actually. It was that was a really good crowd. fight. It was a very good fight. It was, one of the, it was one of the better lady fights I've seen in, in recent memory. She's tough. Oof, in, a, in a loss, she's tough. No question about her as a fighter. I don't no know question. her age. Do you know her age? I believe she's 33. Rama's 33? Yeah. 32, 33. Is she that old? I believe so, yeah. She, you she know had she a whole just did the Olympic boxing. Games. Yeah, she did the Olympics. And she, 33, she's been yep. a, a big, a big model. She's been on the cover of Vogue UK. She's been very, very active, you know, in, in terms of her life before and see, boxing. And, and I'm glad that I got you on here because you know about her. Oh, here go, mm -hmm. Regis right here. Oh, and, and at go. the same time, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is going to be messy. <laughs> hey, Fee, what, what the Let's hell, get hey, it, Fee? baby. Let's get the mess started. Let's do it. <laughs> well, go ahead then, Regis. How you feeling, boss? I'm cool, brother. I'm still in New Orleans, you know. Um, I had a little off night the other night, but you know, uh, it's all good, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm in good spirits. I I'm gonna go with what Chris said, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna let everybody else take over. But Chris, I just asked him what he didn't like about doing commentary. He said probably the Twitter responses that you get. <laughs> What kind of responses have you gotten since this fight, and do you feel it's justified? Um, I didn't. I didn't check Twitter, bro. I try to stay off social media. Honestly, um, I mean, I, people calling me and saying things, but not. I mean, I didn't. I, I'm staying off social media and stuff like that right now, bro. Right now, I'm all in my, you know, good spirits. So, you know, when it's when it's time to get back to drawing board, and I guess when I get back home to Texas and stuff like that, that's when I'll, I guess, start creeping online and start looking at some things. Yeah. Yeah, I stay off of the I stay off of the uh the the social media too. Go ahead, Chris. You got something for him? Yeah, I can agree with that too. What's up? What's up, Regis? Chris Algieri here. Up, Chris? I, got, up, Chris? I, I was I, I was there the night of your fight. Got to call the fight. Um, man, Zaria, I called him before. He fought so differently than I had ever seen. I never I never thought he would take that kind of approach. What what did, what were you guys thinking in there in those first couple rounds? The fact that he was just moving and moving and kind of counter. He was just running around, bro. I mean, I like he he was a late replacement. Wait, let me get out of here. Ma, you going to back to that? Ma, I'm, I'm on the interview. I'm going back to that. Um, I mean, I was. It was like I knew that he was a late replacement, and I knew that you know he basically he just came to survive. He didn't want to get knocked out, so he came to survive. So he just ran. You know, he ran around and. We didn't prepare for it. You know, I'll be honest, bro. Mm -hmm. We didn't prepare for that at all. You know, what I what I watched on him. You know he had some he had some knockout power, so you know he came to fight. And the the fight I saw that it was close with the Honor Barboza thing. He still damn fought Barboza, but with me he mm -hmm. just ran around. So literally in camp we didn't work on we never worked on that. No spar partners moved. Um, nobody like not not on the pads, nothing like that. We didn't work on no type of movement at all, like cutting off the ring or nothing like that. Because I thought that he was gonna come in, you know, actually. You know, try to fight me a little bit, and that didn't happen. He just, you know, he ran around, so I was totally unprepared for what he brought. 
Yeah, at the op- at the opening of the telecast, they asked me because you know a lot of guys are writing him off. He was a late replacement. You know, he didn't he didn't look great against Barbosa, and you know you've been looking great lately, especially. I I think you've you've advanced your style quite a bit since since the fight with Josh Taylor, and um, you know so a lot of guys are writing off. But they asked me like you know what what can he do to give to give Regis trouble? I said, well, he's tall and he can punch, and he didn't really utilize that. I mean, he could punch, sure, but he 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 didn't throw a lot of punches. He moved around a lot uh, in the ring. Um, and then also, I mean, you, you said it afterwards. Fighting at home, I fought at home a lot. There's there's an extra added pressure on those kinds of nights, and and you want to say like, oh, I come, I can rise above it, but you know, that's a real thing, and I I appreciate you being co- honest with that right away. Yeah, definitely for sure, man. Like hometown jitters, that's definitely real. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was just you know like leading up to the fight, I didn't feel it though. Leading up to, it, I was like, I'm good, but. I think once the weigh-ins came, you know, my friends kind of sensed it. Like me, I'm a I'm a silent killer. I don't really say nothing. I, if people say things to me, you know, I I might balk back at it. But for the most part, bro, I don't say nothing. So you know, when he did he did his little muscle thing, and I started talking to him. And obviously, he don't speak English, so he don't even understand. So I'm just talking really for nothing. And even my friends and stuff, they said it. You know, my wife, she was like, you know, like you just you look out out of your comfort zone and i felt like i was too because i don't i don't talk like i know what i am i'm a silent killer i don't need to talk to nobody and it kind of got me out of my you know it just got me out of my comfort zone so um but yeah it was you know I, then i started i think at the way and then i started feeling pressure and you know we had a good crowd we had some celebrities in there so i started feeling it and then dealing with tickets and just all all that type of stuff man it was just it it was it was a lot I like to say that boxing at home is the silent killer because you don't feel anything. And because we've heard it so many times before the fight happens, we like, oh, we good. We doing everything we need to do. We focus. We good. But it's the silent killer because once you get in the ring, there's certain energies that you didn't know you were you were putting out and, 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 and doing a little bit more than you needed to do. And then on fight night, that's when that silent killer shows up, and you and you you look back on you like, man, this was ugly, and it was the worst time for me to be ugly because I was in front of all my fans, all my people. The worst time for me to look ugly, and then when you, when you really think about it, it's like, wow, it, it was this pressure that I didn't even know was there. The silent killer, right? Exactly, and that's that's what happened, you know. And it was, you know, it's just even on top of that, like it was. It was just a. I think that played the off night, and then him running around. It just. It was just. It was just a lot of things that kind of, you know, played into that. And you got something for your boy? Yeah, you know, Regis. I knew you was gonna deal with tickets. I'm from Louisiana, and people were asking me for tickets. I had to. I'm like, bro, I ain't just ask this man for tickets. Like, I had to go through Sean, and I'll get you some tickets. But <laughs> you know, being from the South, we love to look out for each other, bro. What's yeah. the, What's the rule next next fight, Regis? What we changing? Because uh, we not we not, we not fight here next fight. We not fight here next fight. We <laughs> well, coming sure. back, right? We coming back home. <laughs> not not next fight. No no no. Not next fight. No 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 no. <laughs> Definitely not next fight, bro. I'm not coming back here next fight. Oh no, no no. We did a good. I think we did good ticket sales, bro. I think and we did way more than we expected. Um, you know, it was a popping event, but yeah, coming back here now, nah, not right now, bro. I I'd rather, you know, I'm gonna tell Eddie that yeah, we gotta take it somewhere else, bro. Not we not coming back to New Orleans right now, bro. Yeah, so it was just like I said, bro, it's just dealing with too much. You're dealing with tickets, you're dealing with all that, bro. And and something I did that I never do, bro. I, I pride myself on being a professional. And usually, you know, day of the fight, man, I woke up probably like around nine or ten a.m. and um and so I, I text my coach. I was like, bro, like, what time we got to be at the arena? He was like, 7 o'clock. I was like, damn. I looked at the clock. It was like 1 o'clock, 1, 1 30. I'm like, damn, that's another five hours. I'm like, bro, I can't I can't sit in the room all day. And so, you know, I told my wife. I called my wife, like, what you doing and stuff? And she was, like, dealing with tickets. And I was like, man, come get me. And we went by my mom's house. And they was over there dealing with stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, bring me back. You know what? Never mind. Bring me back. Please bring me back to the hotel. Like, Dealing with tickets and all that stuff, bro. I couldn't deal with that, bro. So it was just, it was just a lot, man. And you know, and, and one thing I I tend to do, and and I know I have, to, I told my wife we got to stop doing this. Is you know, I tend to not, I don't want to say overlook, but we plan a lot of things for like before the fight. You know, yeah. after the fight, we plan a lot of before <laughs> the fight. Basically, like we had, we I I, I, I got a bro. lake house and stuff like that. We had a whole party. Um, you know, we were like, oh man, we about to do this. We about to go on a cruise. We about to do this, do this. And like, I'm like, the fight not even over. My wife, she in Vegas right now. 
Um, I'm probably gonna head to Vegas, you know, tomorrow or something like that. And we we had all this planned out way before the fight. So I was like, bro, we can't do this no more. Like, let's let's get past the now. For now on, we get past the fight. Then we make plans and stuff like that. Cause we had we literally got all our stuff already, bro. Like I said, she's in Vegas filming some boxing wives show with Zab Judah and stuff like that. I'm coming out there, I think probably Thursday. Then we going to Miami. And we had all this already planned, so I think that you know I don't I don't like to say I overlook my opponents because I don't. But if you plan all that stuff, it's kind of like a I guess you could say an element to it, basically. Bro, listen, I had a I had a on my phone only time I fought at home in Cleveland. I had a list of things that I was gonna do after the fight, a list of people I was gonna <laughs> see after the all this kind of stuff, all planned before the fight even happened. As soon as that last bell rung, was the ugliest one of the ugliest fights I've been in. And my whole career at home in Cleveland. And I learned that same lesson as soon as the bell rang. I had too much on my mind, too much going on after the fight. And wasn't even, it wasn't that I was overlooking the dude. I just was so in such an urgency to get to the stuff afterwards. Because as fighters, we look forward to a great night of boxing. And then we look forward to all of the fun and love that we're going to receive after that. You know, so exactly. I'm glad you got it out your system, bruh. You got you had an ugly fight the other night. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about you when you leave. And uh, but at the at the least, bro, man, enjoy the enjoy the victory, man. And we look forward to you coming back stronger. Yeah, bro. It's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go back, go back to drama. I'm gonna take a little vacation, take a little breaks. Now I can enjoy my breaks and vacations, but I'm definitely going back to drama, bro. bro. I do this, bro. I won't be the best, you know. So I definitely gotta tighten up on some things. I'll be honest with myself. I'm always really honest with myself. So I definitely gotta go out there. To- tighten up on some things and um you know talk to my training staff and like bro we gotta you know like it's it's some things we gotta work on for sure yeah you know that's why i'm gonna go go back to drum ball go back to gym and and bust my ass i hope these young fighters are paying attention regis because we we said that on fight night in the the ring the honesty that you that you had in regarding the fight but even now like you you've kept that honesty about I got to change things. I got to go back to the drawing board. A lot of a lot of champions don't like to admit those kinds of things. So I, ho- I hope these young fighters will listen to to a guy like you, and they can they can take some notes because that's that's a great lesson right there. There you go. Yes, sir. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Regis, we appreciate so, you jo- joining the podcast for a second, man. Have a have a good one, man. Enjoy your victory. All right, no, no problem, bro. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go talk shit about me. Yes, sir. I'm gonna talk all this. Hey, hey, Regis. Uh, before you. Hey, Regis. Before you leave. Hey, I'm always in Louisiana. Hey, what boxing gym you at? I, I ain't, I ain't trying to come there with you there. I'm just trying to shout them out. <laughs> New Orleans boxing gym. New Orleans boxing club. In New Orleans, okay. out here, New Orleans boxing club. When I'm out here, you know, I'm most of the time I'm in Texas and LA, but when I'm out here, New Orleans boxing club. Okay, got you, got you. All right, big dog. All right. Hey, hey, y'all stay y'all on for a second. Go, well, let me have it. <laughs> 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 all right, and go ahead real quick. I, I was gonna wait, but go ahead. Give us your what you thought about the fight, all that good stuff. I got. Uh, I'm gonna crush I mean, whatever you if, say. So, I mean, I don't know if you, it's considered running. Uh, I mean, the guy moved a lot, man, a lot. Mm-hmm. All credit to Regis. He gave him props for the uh, knockdown in the first round because I was like, it definitely was a knockdown. It was a punch. Uh, Regis has to do better at cutting off the ring, especially yeah. if you're gonna fight Devin Haney. Yeah, and I think. That's something he realized he needs to work on going into a fight. Hopefully, that's next with Devin Haney. Uh, you know, performances like that, Chris, Sean, y'all both know. Sometimes you can uh, lure in who you really wanted. Yeah. That's the thing about that performance. That's the thing that's about a, that performance. That's what I'm yep. kind of like. I'm not even going to yep. lie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the good thing. Uh, Haney, <laughs> T.O., they, everybody talking about him now. Yeah. So, and we know at the end of the day, we know what Regis can do. We've yep. seen him in there at mm-hmm. the peak and uh, just changed styles. What this guy was last week, two weeks? Yeah. Last I think it's like, I think it's like, it's like three and a half weeks. He, he okay. had a little bit of time. Yeah. But and, still, it's, and, not, it's not a lot for a world title fight. Yeah. And the, the guy's style is very ugly for reasons. Uh, yeah. I did. It's I, terrible. I commentated yeah. that guy back in uh, 2020, 20, 20, uh, 21. I commentated mm-hmm. uh, I'm that guy, Danielito uh, Zaria. I commentated him. And so I knew that he was going to be on the move. Remember, Aunt, I wasn't even watching the fight. Yeah. And I text you, I said, he probably ain't doing nothing but trying to, but moving on Regis. And you say, yeah, he not, he not engaging. He got him at first, that first round when he felt Regis' power. And then in the third round when Regis dropped him, yeah, he got back him, to yeah. what he normally does. Back in 2021, when I commentated him, he was moving around the ring. All of the film on him was him moving, outboxing guys, being slick, being fast, being sharp. 
And then he made some adjustments, went toe to toe with Barboza. And this is the thing that people don't realize. If you don't promote Danielito Zaria, but we seen the big performance from Regis Progre, we looking at this like, oh, this is a rollover fight on to the next. And then when mm -hmm. he struggles, everybody's like, oh, Regis ain't this, Regis ain't that. No, that guy was all of that. And he didn't know because he couldn't find nothing on him. The last thing he was able to look at three weeks before a fight is a fight of him going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So that's what they prepared for, you know? Hey, styles make fights. I mean, Z Zorito, I, I didn't expect him to fight that kind of fight. Also, I... You know, and to your point, I expected Regis to be able to cut off the ring better because he's been able to do that in the past. He's actually yeah. good at that, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Regis. And he he wasn't he wasn't that night. I don't know if it was because of the length because Zor Zorita he's long, he's tall. Um, you know, he's got he's got a kind of like a like a gangly body to him. His knee, you know, the way he moves his legs, that's not the greatest footwork, but he does have long long arms. He throws punches from kind of strange angles, and he can crack. I was we gonna say right away. Like, let's keep he it real. Crack. He got right? he caught he Regis crack. in the first yeah. round. Yeah, so well, he, he, he hurt he hurt Barbosa bad in the in the tenth round. Yeah. In the final round, he had Barbosa in a lot of trouble. He didn't do nothing that whole night, but at the end of end of the fight, he had Barbosa in a lot of trouble all the whole round. So, uh, you know, the guy the guy's not not bad. He just chose a, a certain style. But listen, he could punch, and he he, he cracked he cracked uh, Progre early, and and, uh, and you know, even he from recovered. That standpoint, but, even from that standpoint, when you talk about cutting off the ring, that means you're going to the fire. You know yeah, what I mean? Yep. So we want why we want him to cut off the ring, make this a fight, make this dude fight, stop him from running all this, this and that. Also, he has to respect the power that that Danielito had in the fight. You know, so I felt like stylistically, and, and I got the answer. I I already knew that it was probably just too late for them to really prepare for him and see everything that he was going to bring to the ring. But beyond that, you just take it. He was a re, a replacement fight. This wasn't yep. the way this fight was supposed to look. The style, the style matchup that the matchmakers made was for a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle, you know? And, and now they have to find just who, who can we get to get in the ring with this, this rigaroo, you know what I mean? And, and they found this guy, and it, and it just it wasn't a good fight for TV, you know? I thought he got the job done. I thought the split decision made sense, and uh, he gets to move on. And, and to your point, this was one of those fights where you didn't look too good and you didn't look too bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, he's, like, he's, he's he got... left the ring with his title. He left the ring with his title, and a lot of questions of people that would be like, "Hey, I'll fight that guy." Yeah. yeah. After, after that performance, I'll fight that guy. Yeah. You know, so it's it, it's not it's not the worst thing in the world. He 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 retains his title. He gets to move on to get another big fight. He he's he's got the right mindset that he wants to go back to the gym and work. So uh, also the Liam Powell, he was a southpaw, so he had been preparing for a southpaw. Yeah. Ouch. So that's yeah. another thing. You got a last one replacement who's an opposite side. Very, very different style of fighter. Not a puncher. Barrow's not a puncher. Zorio is, is, is a legit puncher. So, yeah, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of changes happen. And, uh, you know, even even in terms of his style that he chose to use that night, uh, Danielito. So. Chris, here's, yeah. the, here's the other thing, Chris, that people don't truly understand. This was a, 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 a ugly night for, for, Reg for Regis. And he looked off. And while people are saying he's not this, he's not that, oh, Haney going to get him, this guy going to get him, all this and that, take a look at Vasily Lomachenko versus Jermaine Ortiz. Mm -hmm. Vasily did not look like the Vasily of, of, of late, of old. And Jermaine Ortiz, I think, came to the ring with much more than people knew he was going to come to the ring with. That is promotional that is the, the the fault of the promotion. With this fight right here with, with Daniel Lito, there, was, there wasn't much you could do to promote him short notice. Sure, sure enough. But with Jermaine Ortiz, outside of beating uh, Mikey Garcia, we really didn't know what he had. And so when he comes to the ring and he really challenges Vasily, everybody's saying Lomachenko ain't got it no more. It ain't that Lomachenko ain't got it no more. It's just that we didn't know what that guy had. And now we just found out that that guy's a really good boxer. And there's there was other information that was that was left out of that. Jermaine Ortiz and uh, he was a former sparring partner of Lomachenko, and Lomachenko's got oh, yeah. a style that's that's so difficult to prepare for. I always yeah. said that when I fought Pacquiao, I was like, the hardest part about fighting Pacquiao was trying to prepare for Pacquiao because Pacquiao. you can't <laughs> find sparring partners like him. Yeah, you can't find sparring partners like like Vasily Lomachenko. Yeah. So Jermaine Ortiz had already had that experience. He had already spent. 10, 20, 30 rounds with this very, very difficult style to prepare for. He knew what was in front of him. Yeah. Also, he's way bigger. Jermaine Ortiz is a big, big lightweight. 
He's young. He's hungry. This is his opportunity of a lifetime. Lomachenko's coming off a long, a long layoff. When you add it all up, it makes sense. And and to your point, Jermaine Ortiz is actually a very good fighter. So uh, yeah, a lot but, of people look at 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 Lomachenko like you're saying, like, oh well, he he's you know he's shot now. And, <laughs> Obviously but no, no, not. No, but the but the point is that the promotion for that fight was all for Lomachenko. The promotion yeah, yeah. wasn't for a great fight, which is what we got. The the promotion wasn't for a competitive fight. That's what we got. The promotion was for, for Lomachenko's coming back, and here's Ortiz, and we, we're looking forward to putting Haney together. That wasn't the way the fight should have been promoted. If you promote this to us in terms of us, this being a, a, a uh, competitive fight, then all of a sudden, we know what to expect. Nobody knew what to expect from, uh, from Danielito. Again, the, short notice for that one, but, but I got another one. Tiffima Lopez, when he fought Sandor Martin. Yep. Nobody yep. expected that fight to be competitive because the promotion didn't, didn't promote the fight to be competitive. They promoted it, everything about the takeover and everything about Tiafima Lopez. Then he gets in the ring and the fight's competitive. He won, I thought he won the fight very, very close and very, very much so could have gone the other way. But if you promote it to us that this is going to be a really competitive and interesting fight, then nobody's surprised. Then nobody's not nobody's looking at the other guy like, oh, he ain't got it no more. What did what did, what did Tiafimo look like against uh, Josh Taylor? Nobody mm -hmm. expected that. Mm -hmm. But that's that's your fault. You didn't tell us what Sandor Martin had, and we expect him to just go in the ring and roll over uh, Martin, and he doesn't. And now we're all saying, oh no, he ain't got it. And there's so many troubles outside of the ring. He ain't going to be able to put it together. Promote these fights to us and let us know that these fights are going to be competitive. Give us a reason to watch. The promotions oh, you know, never you, give us you know a reason to watch is, these fights. You know how it is, man. It's what have you done for you? What have you done for me lately in this sport? Yeah, you're yep, only as yep. good as your last fight. We've we've all been raked over the coals for a bad performance here and there, and then come on to have the biggest fight of our careers up until that point. Uh, I remember I was getting interviewed in Vegas before the uh, Canelo Bivol fight or Bivol Canel Can Canelo now, uh. and uh, <laughs> they were asking me like, what, you know, this this what can he do? And I was like, what do you mean? What can he do? This is a real fight. Like he, he he's got a, a really tough style for Canelo to deal with. He's very good at it being in and out. Because I I worked the corner versus Bivol. Uh, I was in the corner of Sullivan Barrera when he fought Bivol for his his title a, a bunch of years ago, and I saw how good that man was firsthand. I'm 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 this close to the ring, and I'm like, this guy's a problem. Yeah. And so when people are trying to tell me that, you know, Canelo's gonna walk over him, I was like, I don't I don't I don't see that at all. You all are just you guys are promoting Canelo, not the Canelo versus Bivol fight, just like you said. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta sell fights, not not people. So all that to say, just like you said, and he done Regis done fought himself into some more great fights mm -hmm. because he didn't look. He, too, he fought himself into some money. He, he didn't look too good. Yeah. But he also didn't look too bad. No, he didn't look too bad. <laughs> and he got the win. He and I want everybody to know, like, hey, what you saw the other night was a product of a fighter having more than 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 you than you knew that he had. And also a product of, again, this guy fighting at home, handling everything, don't need to be handling none of that. And he said to himself, I ain't going back home. I love home, but I can't fight there. <laughs> That's not for me. Uh let Anthony Joshua fight. You can keep fighting England. I'm not fighting at home. I respect it. Yeah. What up, and what uh, you doing, man? Nothing, man. I was actually about to get off the phone. You know, my, I'm the boss, aka me. Say, I gotta go. Peace. But now I, I appreciate y'all. Uh, appreciate y'all time. Hey, Chris, hold it down for me. <laughs> I got you, brother. I got you. All, all right, right all have right. a good one, brother. All right, man. Y'all have a blessed day. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, so real quick, I want to get back to Romula real quick and uh, mm -hmm. Alejandra uh, Guzman. This is, I think this is one of the few sports, we've seen it in other sports, but boxing is one of the few sports where you can overnight become something in the sport. And I feel like that's what Guzman just did. Yeah, she, I mean, she was very impressive that night. I, I've seen her in the past. Um, she had fought for the title against, um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on her first name, but Mercado. And, you know, she fell short in that fight. But apparently what I had heard, which I, I didn't know when I watched the fight originally, was she actually fractured a bone in her forearm in the first round. And when I went back and watched it, you see her rolling her wrist a, like pretty vigorously as she's going back to the round of the corner in round number one. Yeah. She had multiple surgeries on that since that fight. And the big question leading into this fight for, for us as the, as the commentary crew was, 
you know, is she a two handed fighter or is she going to have to fight the, uh, this fight with one hand, like she did against Mercado. And, and, you know, she came up short, but yeah. she did, she fought well in that fight, but there, I don't think there's any question that she had a right hand, uh, uh the fight <laughs> the night when she fought Rama. Cause I mean, that was, that was all she was throwing until she finished it with the left. That girl uh, was she put thumping. on a, cr- a tremendous, tremendous performance. Absolutely. She I'm, was thumping. Did you know she could thump like that? I knew she could punch, but like I said, that fight I had seen, she was pretty much a one-handed fighter. Yeah. And she was throwing that left hook for real. And, yeah. you know, she's, she's putting the right hand out there because it was hurt, but then really ripping the left. But apparently her right hand's even better than her left hook because that was, that was the punch that set up all the danger for, for Ali yeah. uh, that night. She... And then the hook took her out. Do you think this is something that Ramla is able to come back from? I do. I think, I mean, listen, physically, sure. That's what I mean. Mentally, yeah. mentally yeah. is a whole different thing. Mentally yeah. is a whole different thing. If she can, if she if she can overcome, you know, all the negativity we talked about Twitter. If she can overcome all that, she can overcome all the all the questioning of yourself. Um, I do think she'd come back because she does have a lot of physical gifts. She has a lot of talent. She she trains very very hard, from what yeah. I what I understand. She she has moved her entire life to train with real trainers, real fighters, r- get real sparring. That shows me a lot. That kind of dedication for someone who really doesn't have to yeah. is, a, is a big, big deal. And- so I think, I think if she learns from this fight, because she overcame a lot, and we talked about this before, she could a real fighter. She sure. tried to get up even though she was super hurt. Um, I think she can actually use this fight as, as a positive. Yeah, I, I definitely encourage everyone to take a look at Ramla Ali's story. She's She's a fantastic... A uh, young lady, and this is what I caught in the first maybe three to four rounds. She's getting ha- caught with some big shots, and mm-hmm. she didn't stop. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of fighters, men and women, doesn't matter. You get caught with a couple big shots, and all of a sudden your boxing style changes. All of a sudden you become gun shy, and all these things. Romula still pushed the tempo. She still was trying to fight back. She got caught light on her feet a couple times. Had gotten put down, and all that, and was still fighting. So I think the main thing for her. Is to just heal physically, mentally, emotionally. I think if she's able to do that, she can come back because she's a real fighter. I agree. She answered all the questions. Anyone who had a question about Rama Ali, you know, she's coming from a, a background not of boxing. Granted, she has a great amateur experience, but you know, she she doesn't have to fight. She she her her, her life and her career prior to, to her stepping in the ring as a pro, you know, she's a model. She's been on Vogue. She's a, she's a um, uh, um, she's 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 raising awareness for people around the world. She's a true ambassador of yeah. of the sport and for women in general. And um, you know, she, she, she didn't have, have a movie to do this, of herself. But she, she she can fight, man. I she, think they're making a movie right now. I yeah, think there's a movie being made. Yeah, out. she uh, she's fantastic. I, I hope she's able to come back from this. She reminds me a lot of Amanda Serrano. Is there any fighters, uh, female fighters, that she reminds you of? She actually, uh, I, I mean, it, it's just going to be a weird comparison, but I, I, a lot of the things that she was doing in the ring reminded me of Amir Khan because she's very fast. I was really impressed with her speed. I see that one hundred percent. Yeah. I and and you know, I, I, I say that because a lot of people like to diss Amir, but Amir was a very, very talented champion. Absolutely. And his hand speed, his in and out, I saw a lot of shades of that and i'd never really seen that from her i mean her speed was impressive that night yeah. and and that's another thing about amir people didn't realize amir could punch too yeah you know he had he, yeah yep. he, he had power yeah and uh you know ramla i think showed that um for for those two females to, to be at it, going back at it like that yeah and hurting each other back and forth yeah. i mean that's one of the better female fights i've seen that's in recent a fantastic memory. uh comparison to ramla Ram, ramla and uh and uh, uh amir. amir that's a that's a great comparison right there uh, let's move forward real quick. We got um, Calderon and uh, and uh, and Guz- and, and uh, Giasov. Uh, Giasov. Giasov. Yep. Giasov's a force. Mm-hmm. What weight is that? Is that one forty? Forty-seven. Oh, that is forty-seven. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think about him? So Giasov, he used to fight a forty. He's moved up in his last couple fights. Ah, gotcha. um, he was a big, big amateur. You know, those from that Uzbek team, uh, yeah. all those guys that we're seeing who are coming up now yeah. uh, were all with him. I, th- I think he was actually the most decorated of the crew. Yeah. But he's had a slower start to his pro career than some of those other guys. Um, I think at 40, uh, we have a mutual opponent. He fought Emmanuel Taylor uh, a couple years ago. Um, struggled him a little bit. That was like his first step up fight. And then uh, he fought, um, I think, Christian Gomez. It was on the undercard of, uh, of Canelo and Bivol last year. And, um, he dropped Gomez a bunch of times, but Gomez was very much in the fight. It was actually a really entertaining fight. Um, he's, he's talented, but I, I, 
I almost feel like he might have regressed a little bit. I've seen him look better um, in past fights. He was more explosive in the past. Yeah. He, putting punches together much better. Yeah. This this night, it, it was all one and done. It was yeah. all single shots and yeah. really wasn't putting together combinations like I expected. I, it, 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 same thing for me. I, and I thought that uh, he where he got going like a little later in the fight, like maybe around six or seven. And then right around like round 10, those were like his really hot rounds. And it took him a little while to get going. And then, like you just said, like I expected more flurries. I expected the flash is there. The I think the explosiveness is there as well. But you're mm-hmm. right. I feel like he regressed just a little bit and uh, didn't really give you sentiments of I want to see him in the ring with such and such. You know? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see anything in this night or in the night before. Where I was like, all right, this guy's a future world champion. Uh, listen, he, he's got the pedigree. He's got the physicality to do it. But you know how it is, Sean. It's that. It's that other thing. That makes a champion. It's that it's that unspoken thing. I just I just didn't get a feel of that in these last two fights. This one, especially being so close. Sure. Um, and you know, he had a guy in front of him who's undefeated, but he's an older guy. I think he's yeah. like 35, 36. Yeah. Um, unheralded, hasn't really fought a lot of really, really tough guys. Um, but and also a guy that didn't want to engage that much. So that can that can that can hurt your performance. And yeah. he hasn't fought in a year. Yeah. So it's, I think it was 13, 14 months since his last fight. So yeah. time out of the ring is is you know, that's that's a silent killer as well. We talked about the silent killer about fighting at home, but yeah. being out of the ring for a long period of time is not good either. We're gonna keep getting through this because I want to talk to you about Crawford and Spence, and that's one of the one of the main points right there is the fact that you know both guys have been in, inactive for for the mm-hmm. sake of words. Um, and we'll and we'll even we'll stop there and let's move over real quick to uh, to the to the Australian card to um, Tim Zhu and uh, Carlos Ocampo. And also, I just wanted to cover real quick. Did you watch the co-main, Sam Goodman? I did not, no. So here we go. This is what we're talking about. I didn't get to see the whole card. <laughs> don't worry about it. I got you. Sam Goodman okay. and Raiz Salim. I don't know if you know Raiz, but Raiz is or was undefeated um, at 122. Uh, one, had won two title eliminators. And this was the third title eliminator for the IBF. He goes over to Australia. And we traveled back here together. And he and he told me he said, man, I just I didn't get enough time over there. I didn't get acclimated enough. I felt myself when I was going to the ring, but a couple rounds in, things just weren't really firing off the way that they were supposed to. He drops it to Sam Goodman. I don't know if we got the highlight, but I I, I just really I want to cover Sam Goodman real quick. This kid is really really good. He he does take some shots periodically, but he's a good fundamentally sound boxer. He likes to fight right there. Um, and in range, he knows how to control the range. He knows how to step around, in, out. He's a really versatile fighter. I, I think at this point he may lack some power, but what he lacks in terms of power strength, he makes up with the mental toughness. This kid is really, really tough. And the interesting thing about this fight was I actually had him sweeping the fight. Uh, Rice thought he won. I respect it. The fight ended up being scored a split decision. I had this, no. I think I had it like 10 rounds to two or something like that. Three rounds to nine, something like that. But here's the thing that I wanted to note about him. The end of the fight, 12th round, he's still taking the fight to Raiz. And he's trying Mm -hmm. to knock out Raiz. And the reason why I wanted to point that out is because if you don't see this, what I'm doing right now, then you don't know about Sam Goodman. And if you happen to see Sam Goodman here in the United States, you may not expect him to do what he's going to do. You may say, oh, this guy's from Australia, uh, whatever. I don't know if he's, he's the real deal. And I want to give him his credit now. That way, when he makes it over here to the States or he gets in that big fight, everybody's ready for what they're going to see. This kid is electrifying. He's a really good boxer. Fights right there in range. Knows how to control the range. Knows how to step around. Makes some really good in, in-ring adjustments. The whole nine. He's he's the real deal. And he's got Tapales now for the IBF title. And they'll probably look to make that fight happen this in the far or something like that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize. I just looked him up now. I actually saw his fight with TJ uh Doheny and and he's a he's a really tough guy. Yeah. And Goodman dominated him. And yeah. and like you said, like he's not a big puncher in terms of his knockouts, but he's a physically strong guy for the weight class. His endurance is off the charts. He he just he is pushing pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah. That's the funny thing about physical strength and power. They're two different things. Yeah. And I think a lot of people kind of forget that. Because he fights a very even those clips you could see, yeah. he's going forward, he's right in the pocket, he was yeah. pushing Reese off of him. Like he, he's a strong guy. Yeah. 
he doesn't not have a punch, but you know he, he he's strong. I appreciate you, man, co-signing me right there. That's it. And then the main <laughs> event. I mean, we had a quick night over there doing the commentary. Uh, Tim Zhu comes out, and um, and you know how it is sitting ringside when you know what's about to happen and you just know it. And it's like I'm not even gonna say it. I'm gonna just let it work itself out. But he came out. He could see that 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 left hand was low, and he comes over the top with a couple of right hands. And uh, for the second words, that's all she wrote, man. He enjoys fighting. And he has been out to prove himself to not be Costa Zoo's son, but to be Tim Zhu himself. And I love the thing that he does after the fights. Now, this is two times I've had a time I've had a chance to commentate him. After the fight, he says, What's my effing name? And and everybody yells Zhu, you know. So you can see what he's after. And, uh, I mean, just a, a fantastic boxer to this point that I've seen now twice. I've seen him mature just in a couple of months, getting back in the ring when he didn't have to. Uh, tell me what you think about Tim Zhu. I'm, I'm actually really high on this kid. I think uh, I think he's very, very talented. He's, he's probably the most fundamentally sound Australian I've ever seen, you know, born a race. Obviously, his father was not born there, but he was he fought out of Australia. Um, and, you know, he's got that he's got that 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 gene in him he's got he's got the zoo gene his father was a was a legend but um no, i think he's actually i'm actually really high on him i do think that he is a fantastic fighter i do think that he will be a world champion one day and listen i mean he he could be the guy to topple charlo I, i'm i'm not going to predict that right now Ooh. but I, I i don't think it's out of the out of the question you know I, I think he's very very talented going off of this fight i don't think anything of ocampo i i i've i've seen him fight before obviously spence uh blasted him out in one round with it with a body shot um, he didn't look classy or clean in this fight. Um, so I, I don't really think that this fight shines a, a true light on Zoo, yeah. but he did what he was supposed to do with the man who was in front of him. There you go. And that's important. There you go. That's important. If he went out there and he went a couple rounds with him or if it was an ugly fight or whatever, there would be a lot more questions. This one, at least you're like, okay, cool. He's, he, he's probably got the goods. Let's see how far he can take it. But I, I, I'm high on on Tim Zhu. I think he's I think he's very talented. Chris, talk real quick about how he's now done two fights in between the the mandatory that he has with Charlo. He does not have to get in the ring, and yet he's chosen to do it twice. Speak to us about that. I think that's very smart. You know, he's surging now. He's got momentum. He's young. He's 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 not taking damage in these fights. Even you know he, he's the the um, I'm sorry the, the the his first step up fight uh, with Terrell uh, Gausha. And he gets dropped early, comes back, boxes really well against a very, very good fighter, wins that fight. I think that was a really important step for him to get over that first round knockdown, to beat a name American fighter. His next fight, Tony Harrison. Tony Harrison can really fight, even yeah. in, even as an elder, elder, you know, older, <laughs> not elder, yeah, as yeah. an older, I'm, I'm going to say elder because he's, he's such a good boxer, but yeah. an older, older champion. Yeah. Um, the way that he beat him was very, very impressive. And, you know, yeah. that was his probably toughest opponent to date. And he looked, he looked phenomenal. Yeah. Then he gets this guy. I mean, he's, he's staying busy as a young fighter. I talked about the silent killer being inactive. This kid's staying active and he's being very, very smart about it. He's not wasting any time in the ring. He's getting the work done. He's staying in camp. That, that, that's one of the reasons why I feel like his fight with Charlo could be a real challenge. I mean, this guy's had how many camps in a row? That's one thing people don't really think about. They think about, oh, he's staying active and busy in fights. No, he's staying active in camps. Exactly. He's rolling camp to camp to camp because yeah. he's not getting hurt in these fights. He's going out there doing, doing his job and going right back to work. And Love I it. think that that fight a year ago, Charlo and Zoo, I said, ah, Charlo's got it. Now, I, I, I think it's, it's very much so question 50-50. The fact that Tim has been busy, active, both in the ring and also in training camp, keeping his blood boiling, keeping his mind focused, keeping his mind going, all the while we got a Jamel Charlo getting, getting stale over here, getting, getting cold over here. Uh, we and we don't know what he's what what where his focus is at, you know what I mean. So I just think that the momentum has swung highly in the favor of Tim Zhu, and short of him coming over here and freezing in the moment, or short of him coming over here and uh, just having a bad night, it's a fifty fifty fight. Yeah, I, I mean, I I probably lean a little bit towards Charlo, but I agree with you and everything you're saying. I mean, in terms of in terms of the, the momentum, the way things are going. Um, Zoo looks like he's a man on a mission. I like what he's been saying after fights now too. Like you said, 
he said something recently. I don't know if you heard what he said. He said it wasn't even about the he, – he's like, I didn't care about the title. He's like, I want to fight Charlo. He's like, I want his name on my record. He said that, yeah. I yep. love that. Yep. I love that. I want his name on my record. When he, he said that uh, the other night after the fight, and when he yep. said it, I, it, that solidified it for me in terms of him being ready for Jamel Charlo. Before uh, all the questions were he hasn't fought anybody, what has he done, all this and that. He's getting the right experiences. Take a look at what Regis just said. It's hard fighting at home. He's being mm-hmm. able. He's able to uh, keep all of those outside distractions and all that. He's able to bring it all in and perform at a very high level. And in an environment that's supposed to be hostile for the opponent, it, it is internally hostile for him because of X amount of reasons that Regis just spoke on. You know what I mean? So again, just want to talk talk about that real quick like i think that that is it's a it's a it's it's an interesting fight i think it's a close fight and um i think if that fight happens soon i'm 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 looking at zoo man i'm looking i'm 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 convinced that he's the real deal at, at 54 sean do you think that charlo comes right back to the zoo fight or does he take an interim fight you know he's been coming off i believe he had a hand injury he's he's had some out of the ring issues to deal with. Does he come right back to Zoo or does he does he take an interim? Think about it. Zoo just fought three months ago. How many fighters are fighting every three months when they when they reach that level? Mm-hmm. He's he's he doesn't need the money, and I don't put his business out there. But I, I I he doesn't need the money. He obviously doesn't need the fights. He's put positioned himself to be there, but he's still staying busy and fighting three months later because he was told that Jamel Charlo is not going to be ready this summer. He took a chance three months later and getting got back in the ring. If Jamel comes back and he says, I want a tune-up fight, we're looking at that fight happening next year. Because Jamel's yeah. not going to take a fight and then come right back two or three months later. If Jamel has a fight, like just like the other night with Carlos uh, uh, Ocampo in the last one round, I can see one or two things happening. Either he says that, well, that, I didn't get enough out of that one. Or he says, all right, I'm ready, let's go. But I think it has to be he. I, I essentially I do think that he needs that in between fight, but I don't think he's gonna do it mm-hmm. because there's there's yeah. just there's not a, he's not working with a lot of time now. I agree. I think he's gonna be forced to yep. take that fight immediately. Yeah. And but also you got a, you got a hand injury, and yeah. I don't know if you've ever hurt your hand before. We all we all have dealt with it. But listen, you never know with those things. Yeah. Uh, it, taking taking a fight in between is very risky because yeah. even even you have an Ocampo. You can even, you can hurt your hand on a, on an Ocampo, yeah. you know, even if it goes one round, yeah. Because that's that's how hands are; they're finicky. Yeah. So it would probably be smart to go right for it. But oof, I don't know, man. It's is a it's it, it, that's a great matchup. I'm excited. That's another fight that I'm excited for. We're having a great year of fights. Hopefully that happens this year. Absolutely, we are. Absolutely, we are. Before we get out of here, and remember, I hope you got some motivation for my people. Um, let me let me get these a couple. There's a couple super chats I need to get in real quick. Um. I got three of them right here. Tito Donis, Donis. He says, Tio went through the same thing with Martin. He fought a late replacement mover like Danielito. That is exactly what we saw um, the other night from, uh, from, uh, from Regis. Was exactly what, or a lot of what we got from Tio and, uh, and Martin. And then uh, Rafael32, he said, everybody wants all the smoke from Regis now. <laughs> I feel all the 135-pounders moving up. Regis and Matias beat them all. I'm not mad at you, Rafael. I believe the same Whoa. thing. Fought himself into a big payday. That's exactly what Ant said. I got to get Ant the credit there. And then uh, Rafael came back with one more. He said, Aleem nor Goodman is ready for a Fulton or Indian. I, I got it. You're right. No, neither yeah. of them are ready for <laughs> Fulton or NUA. Um, you got smart but, fans. But I do think that Goodman is getting better. And uh, I look forward to seeing him again, man. He's a fun fighter to watch, and that's why I've learned about the Australian people, man. They are fun and uh, and very very kind people, man. I had a great time over there in Australia again. Um, and they love they love fights. They love fight it, sports. They, they love, love boxing. Fights. They love MMA. They love kickboxing. They are they are fight they fans. show up. They show up. Listen mm-hmm. before we go, Crawford Spence. Yes. Uh, have you been able to have? That have you been able to have that 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 boxing that intellectual boxing conversation about this fight that you know really scratches that itch for you? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. Well, well, then shoot, let's do it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I Man, I listen. I actually, off the top, 
I think that, you know, people are talking about this fight happening too late. I don't necessarily think that's true. I think that I think that the timing of when this is happening actually makes it a more competitive fight. It's perfect. I think I think a couple years ago I was I was really favoring Spence. I thought he was just too big for welterweight. Um, Crawford was still growing into the weight class. He came in late. It's his third weight class. People need to remember that. Yeah. He was a 35 pound champion, 40 yeah. pound undisputed. And then he's now a 47. Yeah. Um, so it was his third weight class. This is Spence's first weight class. He actually boxed higher as an amateur Yeah. and you know, he's gone his way up. He's yeah. the biggest welterweight I've, I've ever seen. Yeah. And he, um, I think, but now Crawford's a real welter, man. That guy, I've seen, I've seen scales with he's 177, 180 pounds. Like, yeah. you know, like I, I think the guy is real. He's also got a hundred percent KO uh, percentage at at welterweight. Not the same level of opposition that that I think Spence has had um, in terms of the timing of when he fought everybody. Yeah, but sure. uh, this is a real fight, man. And, and and also the fact that Spence is now on the tail end of two major car accidents. Yeah. And and a torn retina. Torn retina twenty years ago was it was a the end of your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, modern modern medicine has definitely helped things out, but it, that's still something to think about. So, yeah, I think this is about as even as a fight as you as you could you could you could get. You know, I I, I, I flip flop on who I think's gonna win every day. How could how could you not flip flop on who's gonna win every day? Um, for me, I believe that the the accident the, the first accident that that Spence was in, uh, I'm I'm glad that God saved him from that. Mm-hmm. And it made him better as a person. And you already know that who you are in the ring is who you are outside of the ring and vice versa. Which means he matured in the ring. Which means he's better now in the ring. Of course, you have to take in, into consideration the, the physical, um, possible physical ailments such as the eye. But we see him now twice. And we have not seen him complain about the eye. We have not seen him go to the hospital about the eye. We have not seen him in between rounds blinking or anything like that, which would give us the assumption that that eye is healed and it is fine. The other side of that, you got Crawford, who, again, is coming up now three weight classes. How much more experience do you expect this young man to have? He's got every experience required, needed to be at this point in his career against the most, the heaviest hitter at 147 pounds. And again, you can even argue that because now... Crawford, we know what his statistic is at 147 now. So I think even from a standpoint, when you take a look at, it's, it's even from this standpoint too, you got one fighter coming down in weight from amateur to pro, fought amateur at 54, comes down to 47. He's holding 47. And that's something that a lot of people don't take into consideration. What does it take for you to hold your weight there? Eventually, you're going to start to cut into some things that you wouldn't want to cut into just to make that weight, just to keep that money at that specific level and, and, and to get the best fights possible. You know, so uh, uh, Spence has really held and stayed and stayed at that weight class as long as he can. I think that this is his last fight at 47. And then you got a fighter coming up to 47. But when he started at 135, we don't know how much weight he was losing to get to 35. When he was fighting at 40, we don't know how much weight he was weight he was losing to get to 40. And now he's at 47. We can only imagine he's probably the most healthy 147-pound fighter in the world. But again, we don't know how much weight he's losing and how big he gets in between fights at 47. So I, I really, I just think that overall is really people all the time say, well, who you got winning? I don't. I, I got us winning this one. Yeah. And for the first time, like, that's a legitimate answer that I think everyone can appreciate where we win on this one because whether it goes one round, which there's an extreme possibility that this fight could go one round, and the red corner wins or the blue corner wins, or this fight goes the distance. And it's a realistic possibility that this fight goes the distance, and either the red corner or the blue corner wins. It's a 50-50 fight. This is the, this is the, the definition of 50-50. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think, you know, it's and the thing about it is both men do what they do so well. It's who does what they do. That's going to that's going to win the night because because both of them have all the skills. They have all the talent. They have all the physical gifts. They have all the knowledge to beat the other man. But it's just who's going to be able to execute their game plan. Who's going to make their the fight lean towards their skill set? Well, you know, and, and listen, you fought both men, but Crawford, you're basically fighting two guys. He can switch sides. <laughs> <laughs> so seamlessly and he's got different different abilities on either side it's it, it's really something amazing to watch and study 
And then Spence, a lot of people say that he's basic. Well, guess what? The fundamentals work from the de- from the beginning to the top. So I, I, that I, people say that as a, as if it's a negative. I, I don't see that as a negative at all. I think he does the fundamentals fantastically. And he's a much better boxer than people give him credit for. Yeah. So there's so many there's so many layers to this fight that I think people who really know the sport, a guy like you who's saying this is a 50 50 fight, because I think more the people who are more casual will be like, I am team this guy no matter what. You know, they, they're not really looking at it the way that that is really there because this is such a layered, nuanced fight. They're yeah. both so good. Yeah. And I think they're so equally matched. Do you think that this fight has any chance of not being exciting? Absolutely not. I Absolutely agree. not. And you know <laughs> what it's that's... like when you go to an arena. The anticipation mm-hmm. of of the fight is going to the energy is going to move around the room and move around the room. And as people start to pull in right before the main event comes out and all that, that energy is just moving around the room. And then when both of these guys come out, that energy heightens because now you see what you've been anticipating for so, for so long. Now you see them both walk into the ring, whatever they walk walkouts look like. And then once they get in the ring, and, and the thing that I find very, very uh, precious I'm going to go with the word precious about this fight. You always question how much dog somebody's got or how tough somebody is. These are the two toughest boxers in the world. I'm talking tougher than Floyd. I said it. Tougher than Pacquiao. I said it. Should I, should I go out there and say tougher than Tyson? I mean, <laughs> this is the, that's the level that they're on where, mm-hmm. where they refuse to lose. They ref- they refuse to be out talked. They refuse to uh to to. They both are very uh control. They're they're both um controllers in the ring. They both want to yep. be want to be in control. Both want to dominate. Yep. They both want to dominate. Perfect word. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, perfect word. They both want to be the dominator in the ring. How 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 is this fight not going to be great? I agree. Like you said, I think the, I think their competitive natures guarantees it. Because neither one of them part. wants to give an inch. The best part is you got a, a clear, clean boxer in Errol Spence. Yeah, he can mm-hmm. dip in and go to the body and things like that, but he keeps he keeps his everything at home. And then you got a Crawford who will, you know, he'll get a little jazzy with it, but he'll do whatever he needs to do to win the fight. But the thing that I'm pointing out is that you ain't gonna get no cut in the first four rounds and this fight don't go to a decision and we all left like, oh, what happened? You ain't going to mm-hmm. get no crazy low blows. You ain't going to get no crazy shots behind the head or nothing like that. This fight goes, ew, I don't know how long this fight goes, but it it goes and it's great until it ends. And I can see, I can see any scenario. I can see, I can see, I can see Spence going out there and just and muscling him and beating him up. I can see Crawford knocking Spence out. It's just, it's that kind of fight. I can see, I can see a hard fought back and forth war, like the like the fight that you had with Spence, where it's yeah. back and forth, and then yeah. it comes down to one one thing, you know, it comes into the, 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 the anything. Yeah. I, I mean, there's there's so many ways this fight can go go, but man, I'm, I'm here for it. And the closer we get to it, the more excited I get. Two, two, uh, or one more thing, and I'm gonna let you go. We'll get up out of here. We'll wrap it up. Uh, what do you think is Crawford's biggest strength, and what do you think is Spence's biggest strength? Crawford has something intangible in him. He's got that thing, whatever that thing is, that X factor. He finds a way. He he just it's it's. There's no way to to explain it. There's no way to 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 say what it is. Listen, he's got power. He's got speed. He's got technique. He's got the two sides. You know, he he's he's got that dog. He's got that competitive. But he's just got that extra thing. He just finds that thing. He, yes, sir. He, he's got he's got that silent killer. Yeah. Thing that yeah. That, that's see. that's the name of this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I rename the episode the silent. Killer. He has that thing that you just don't see, and in the moment, it happens. Yeah, he's an assassin. And then you got Spence, uh, uh, Spence man. I call so I nicknamed him the Terminator because I feel like that man has an exoskeleton on him. Right. Like, because if you if you really look at him, like right away with everybody, he he fights a certain way. He's very cautious. He boxes very smart at first. Yeah. Then when he realizes you can't hurt him, he's walking you down like the Terminator and walking through your biggest shot. Yo, Kel Brook can punch. Yeah. He was walking through Kel's fire like nothing. Yeah. It was. I, I remember watching that and being like, man. Also, his per like his 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 visage. He. He acts like not. He's a robot. He just goes out there and he handles it. He's a Terminator. So yeah. I've always said, you know, I know his nickname is the Shark, but I've been calling him a Terminator forever because he one, he's just 
the guy's got an exoskeleton. He's just, he's built out of, out of steel yeah. and he's just got a steel focus too. So, ah, man, it's just, it's just such a compelling matchup. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to this, man. Um, I look forward to hopefully doing some more with you ahead of this mm-hmm. fight. I can see, I can see the excitement. Um, and as we get closer, man, I think it'll be great, especially if you're out here in Vegas, man, we'll put something together and, uh, we'll, we'll really chop this up. I, there's a lot to be honest with you that I hold back. Um, for for some other things that I'm trying to do, but also I do believe that wh- while so many people watch this show, I don't want to give answers that these fighters may not have, and then now, 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 now it's out. I want them to prepare, figure you know it out. I mean? Yeah. And so I'm gonna give like this big thing. If I don't do it night of, I'll do it night before. But it's gonna be big, and it's gonna be basically, hey, this is how you can expect this fight to go based on what I feel and what I know, you know. Uh, I appreciate you joining the podcast, man. Oh, thanks for having me. This is, uh, this is a pleasure. I got, you have, I got you for any time. You got some motivation for the people. I do, man. So there's, a, there's something about motivation. I think about it, I think, a little differently than most people. Hold I up, think of it quick. more let me, like... Let me do this one real quick. Uh, Trolley, yep. he said, uh, I think Charlo should vacate the, the one... The, uh, sorry, the WBO, get a tune-up, and then come back and beat Zoo for Undisputed again. Hmm. I love how the fans like they come up with these like how do you know like, <laughs> these, these roundabout strategical <laughs> moves that can be made? I didn't know right. he could do it. I didn't know he could do that. <laughs> <laughs> like there's like there's not a lot of working parts that have to that have to work out for that to happen. All the while I'm over here like he ain't got time. He can't make yeah, he can't do this. He can't do there it is right there, man. We appreciate you, Trolley. <laughs> Go ahead with your motivation. So I was saying I, I think of motivation on I think of, of differently than other people. I think of it more like like faith, right? Like it's one of those things that it's intangible. You can't, you don't, it's, it's not, it's not that it's not real, but it's just what you have going on inside of you to tell you to go do something. Like if I wake up and it's just like, man, I ain't got no motivation today. But you're like, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Like if you really try and break that down, what does that mean? I got, I got to go do, I got to go do what I got to do. I got, I have a duty, whether it be to my family, whether it be to my, my health and my body, whether it be my fitness level, mm-hmm. it, it's a duty. It's an internal duty for you to go do what you need to do, whatever that may be. If, it, like I said, if it's going to the gym or if it's making sure you eat the right thing, if, you know, there or getting on, getting to work on time or early, yeah. you know, I, I look at it like this intangible thing that you you don't have to find it. Yeah, it's it's there. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just there. It's in you at all times, and you just yeah. got you just got to acknowledge it. Yeah, it's really, what it is. I appreciate that word, man. I appreciate that word. Um, for me. This is what I came back from Australia with. Um, I was I was over there and people were asking me if I'm coming back. I'm like, for what? I'm like, I'm 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 loving my life. I love what mm-hmm. I get to do now. I get to travel the world and still talk and, and talk boxing. Is that how many fighters retire from their sport and they still get to travel the world and get paid to do what they do? I said, Well, obviously we we see what Floyd's doing, but how many fighters truly get to do that? And the motivation that I got from that, as I was talking to those guys, I was like, man, like I'm just in a very, I'm a very, very blessed individual. And the motivation that I want to give to everybody, the inspiration that I want to leave you with today is appreciate your life. Cherish the good that you have in your life and don't take anything for granted. A lot of times we wake up and we get going and something bad will happen and that bad, continue, it just shadows the entire day and that one mm-hmm. bad thing that happens becomes what the day was about Mm-mm, that ain't what the day is about the day is about the goodness that you have the blessings that you have the the, the great people around you the love that you share with others cherish all of that and keep it pushing keep it moving forward man and reach out man and, and, and just make somebody else feel appreciated and make somebody else understand how how blessed they truly are this is the port away. Appreciate you, Chris. Anytime, brother. Anytime. I, it was my pleasure being here. Yes, sir. We'll talk later. Absolutely. This is the port away. Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. I said, uh, thanks for having me, brother. I, I, I appreciate you so much. This is uh, it's a good time. Always great to chat.